also want to put on this piece here. You have a wire here that hooks to your coil. That's your kill wire. So hook that up. And you want to tighten your bolt up here. You go ahead and tighten this one all the way. That's all you need to do. You don't have to get it extremely tight. Then I'm going to put the flywheel shroud on. First, I forgot to put the screen on, so we got to do that. This screen goes on just like this. You get your three, uh, I think your T10 torque screws that go in here. Go into a little cup. And you just tighten them up. That's how that goes on. That helps keep dirt from getting in the flywheel and the cooling. And it also keeps you from getting your fingers caught in the flywheel. Now we're going to put the flywheel cover on. You want to make sure your dipstick lines up in the hole over there. Make sure your flywheel cover goes over top of this one. This is why I told you to leave these two screws loose so you can wiggle this to get these two screws in. And you'll have two more screws back here. Get this down all the way here. And now you go ahead and tighten these screws up. You want to get them fairly snug, not too tight. And the same goes for the two in the back, which I'm missing one, so I just I'm just going to put one in. I'm going to put it on the oil tube side, that way it helps hold it down. Now it's starting to look like it has it now, after we get the flywheel cover back on. Now we're going to get the starter on. It's held on by two bolts here in the block. Let's get it started by hand like this. And these are starter or torque drive. So in this particular one, it helps to get them in. Some of them are just regular bolt heads. Regular bolts. And you want to get these fairly tight, but don't get it too tight because the holes will strip back because you're just going into aluminum. You get it pretty snug. This one over here, you got to be careful because you got to get it at an angle. Once you get it snugged up, you might be better off to take a wrench get in there. I'm going to take a chance here. But good enough. And now we're going to go ahead and put the valve spring cover on. Put your gasket on like this. These two little holes go towards the bottom side of it. And it just goes on here. Like I said, you can put a former gasket or some type of sealer on. And now we're going to put the carburetor on. Like I mentioned before, ignore this. This is supposed to be straight. I just got it bent up like this because it's too long. It's for the other type of carburetor. This is all I could find. And when I ordered all these parts, I meant to order one and I forgot. So I'm just going to use this temporarily. Uh, it works. It's not the greatest thing to use. But uh, it'll work temporarily. Uh, the correct way would just be a solid rod, like I said. it will be a little tiny spring. It hooks to this little hole here. There's another little tiny hole in here it'll hook to. Okay, it just hooks to your governor arm, and it hooks to your throttle, throttle plate, and stick your bolt through here, and get your gasket. The gaskets come in different shapes, this is the only one I got. And also, don't forget your carburetor mounting bracket that comes down here. Let's get this fairly snug, the nut driver, and your carburetor set. Make sure your linkage is working for you. That's about right. Now the muffler is the next thing. Okay, you got more than one different type of muffler that can work on these engines. This was the type that came off. It just has a pipe that screws in there. And the other type will look like this. This will just go in here like this. And you got a bolt here that holds it. You just put these two bolts in. Just like that. This one has this one, so we just want to reuse it. Just screw it on there. You see, it's got a lock nut there. You get it pretty tight like this, and take a screwdriver, tap it on there, you lock the nut, and you're good to go. Now I'm going to put a brand new spark plug in it. It's a Champion J19LM. You can use any brand you like. I like Champion and E3. I've been using E3 plugs a lot. Okay. 
spark plug don't have to be extremely tight. Just snug it like that. Put your wire on. You're ready to go. Don't forget to put your oil in it though. I forgot one little thing here. Don't forget to hook your oil breather hose back up on your carburetor. It'll just slide right on that little thing on the carburetor just like that. Also, you need to put your air filter and everything back on there. I'm just going to leave it off in case I have to adjust the carburetor. Watch your fingers when you set these back down. These motors are pretty heavy. Also, don't forget to put your double step pulley back on. I didn't put it back on here because uh, I can put it on later, but it's mainly just testing it right now to see, see how well it's going to run. Okay, here's the most crucial step in the whole rebuild, put oil back in it. I'm just using cheaper oil to break it in with. I like to use Valvoline 30 weight, I'm using 10W30 to break it in with. So there's just no need in wasting the good oil, so we're going to just break it in with this. And I put a mark over here, that way you know how much to put in it. I'm putting a quart and a half in it. I'm just keep an eye on it. That way you're not getting too much in it. But also, after you get it filled up, it's good to take a take a look at your oil seal on the bottom of the crankcase, just to make sure it's uh, not leaking any. Okay, guys, here we go. We're going to start up. First time since it's been rebuilt. Remember, don't hot rod one of these engines after you rebuild them. You want to get the ring seated in real good. Get it broke in good. 
be sure to drain all the oil out of it because it's going to have metal particles or everything seeping in and you don't want that in there so get it good and hot and drain the oil out and put some Valvoline 30 weight out that's what I use of course the main reason I built this engine is to have a good spare engine in case the engine breaks down on my cutting mower I'll have a good engine to put it back on it uh, I like these old 12 and 12 and a half horsepower Briggs the model 28's they're good engines they're built to last uh, I still can't believe Briggs quit making them but oh well that's why I try to get a hold of every one of them I can and hope to rebuild some more in the future. I got a couple more I want to get done. But, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's been a good little project. Uh, well, if you got any questions or comments, just uh, leave me a comment or send me a message here, and I appreciate you watching it. Uh, we'll catch you later.